we did not expect Monday Night Football to come your way from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, the home of the Arizona Cardinals. But as you all know, the Miami San Diego game has been switched to this site because of these scenes. Fire has consumed much of Southern California over the past week, and in particular in San Diego County over the last 36 hours. Yesterday, Qualcomm Stadium, where tonight's game would have been played, was an evacuation site. The situation, of course, is still in emergency mode in San Diego tonight. And thus, these teams got on a plane in San Diego. The Dolphins got to Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix. San Diego came in a little bit later. And now, in adjoining Tempe, Arizona, where Sun Devil Stadium sits, the home of Arizona State University, we get ready for Monday night football. Al Michaels, along with John Madden and Lisa Guerrero, and this is where the world of fun and games meets real life tragedy while San Diego is consumed loss of life loss of property loss of homes battling the fires and all of that most roads closed there was no way this game could have been played there tonight even tomorrow night who knows when so the game has been moved here they got it done very very quickly in fact we'll update you on the fire situation through ABC News at halftime we'll also have a chance to visit with Commissioner Paul Tagliabue about the logistics of getting the game moved on that short notice to Tempe Arizona John coaches are always talking about keeping a team focused keeping the players focused how in the world do you give anybody focused under these circumstances well you know now you have to refocus because that's that's so true it's a cliche but it's also the definition of a pro you have to be able to focus the closer you get to the game the tighter your focus becomes now you look at San Diego as their Saturday night they were focused they were ready for this game Miami gets on an airplane yesterday they're flying into San Diego they're focused now the fires everything changes the game has changed now that becomes a distraction and you're going to lose your focus now you have to get the focus back and I think the players that get their focus back the quickest are going to be the players that play the best both teams of course will be impacted by the change of venue but in particular no question about it the San Diego Chargers coached by Marty Schottenheimer who's down on the field right now with Lisa Guerrero Lisa thanks very much Al now coach you've got players you've got folks in your administration and their families that have been directly affected by the fires can you describe the amount of emotional impact that this will have on your team tonight? Well, you know, uh, certainly the impact uh, is significant, and it's been a distraction to us. However, I think that in the National Football League today, I think players have learned to focus and refocus, and uh, our players will be focused this evening, I'm sure. Well, there's the human element of the fires, then there's the logistical issues involved with moving this game. As a coach, how can you help keep your team focused on the field for the next three hours? Well, you know, our football team has worked very, very hard the last couple of weeks, and while we've all been impacted by the tragedies back in San Diego, right now our focus is out here. Our players wanted to play, and it's Monday night, and we're excited about being a part of it. Good luck to you. Thanks very much, Coach. Now, Al, as you know, this game was billed as Junior Seau's homecoming after having played in San Diego for 13 seasons. He told me before the game that this would be the hardest game that he has ever played. I don't doubt that. And right now, there are at least 50,000 people in here. The price is right. It's free. We'll be back in a minute. Thursday. Log on to Snickers.com for details and a chance to win a trip to the Super Bowl. Two great running backs in action tonight. Ricky Williams, who led the NFL in rushing last season in his first year as a Miami Dolphin in action for Miami. And on the other side, making his primetime NFL debut in his third year is LaDainian Tomlinson, who comes off a 200-yard performance last week facing Junior Seau, the ex-Charger. Monday Night Football, Miami against San Diego in Arizona. Of the National Football League. Tour. So let's go. 
Yesterday they had 40,000 for the Cardinal 49er game, and tonight it's free. They had no opportunity to print tickets, come up with a price plan, anything like that, and thus I think more than 55,000 are here. And John, the first thing about the Dolphins that comes to mind is they they started with a loss to Houston on opening day, and Dave wants that went on the hot seat immediately. They won four in a row, lost last week in overtime to New England. And now tonight they make a quarterback change right and the quarterback is Brian Greasy and he's going to be taking his first snap as a Dolphin now I've always said the best friend of any quarterback is a good running back and he has a great one and Ricky Williams he asked the Chargers what's the number one thing you have to do defensively against the Dolphins and they say Ricky Williams they say, well, what's number two they say Ricky Williams so that means that if they're going to get eight men up and do all those things. Brian Greasy is still going to have to make some plays in the passing game. Greasy starts tonight because Jay Fiedler has an injured knee ligament damage and uh, could be back next week. We don't know. As far as San Diego is concerned, I'm excited about tonight's game because we're going to take a look, and the country will take a look for the first time, at LaDainian Tomlinson, who looks like he could develop into something hugely special. And, and he is. And you watch him play, and he has the combination of great moves. You know, sometimes I watch him move, and he reminds me of Barry Sanders, the types of things that he can do. And then and then he has speed, too. I mean, he can break away, and he's gone all the way. And I was talking to Marty Schottenheimer today about him, and he says, you know, when this guy is finished, if he doesn't have any injuries, he may be one of the best backs that has ever played in the NFL. Talked about good moves. I started a move before we were supposed to. <laughs> but <laughs> it was a good one. It was a pretty good one. A little, a little juke step right there. Olindo Mare will kick off for the Dolphins Mare leading the league in touchbacks with 10 and Tim Dwight will run it back for San Diego and the Chargers for the first time ever wearing blue on blue Drew Brees is the quarterback as he gets ready to come out onto the field on a, a warm night the temperature the conditions about the same as they would be in San Diego had the game been played there tonight. Taken at the four yard line by Tim Dwight. Up past the 20 and then taken down at the 24 yard line as we take a look at the San Diego Charger offensive starters. Drew Brees, Purdue Boilermakers. LaDainian Tomlinson, TCU. Lorenzo Neal, Fresno State. David Boston, The Ohio State University. Tim Dwight, University of Iowa. Justin Peel, Oregon. Damian McIntosh, Kansas State. Kelvin Garman, Baylor University. Corey Raymer, Wisconsin. Phil Bogle, Spring Valley High School. Solomon Page, West Virginia. The Chargers lost their first five games this season, then one last week at Cleveland. First and ten, so they come in with a mark of one and five against the Dolphins, who are four and two. And the first play of the game is Tomlinson in a strength on strength matchup. The San Diego running game against the Miami run defense. The play was whistled dead. And let's take a look at that Miami defense. Adewale Ogunleye, Indiana. Tim Bowen, Ole Miss, Larry Chester, Temple. Jason Taylor, Akron. Martin Greenwood, Syracuse. Zach Thomas, Texas Tech. Junior Seau, USC. Pat Sertan, Southern Miss. Sammy Knight, USC. Brock Marion, Nevada Reno. Sam Madison, Louisville. The Dolphin defense is so good that nine of their defenders have been to at least one pro bowl. Tomlinson now tries to turn the corner, and Brock Marion takes him down out of bounds at about the 32 yard line so third and short upcoming for San Diego you know and that's where Tomlinson is so good because we're talking about his moves and his speed here he does it with speed you see Jason Taylor is out there but he just gets the corner and outruns Jason Taylor you know there's no way you say OK keep containment keep containment stay there but he's too fast for you he just runs right around you. And that's a heck of a combination when you have the moves that he has along with that speed that can be lethal third down a long two from the 32 yard line and a breeze out of the shotgun throws picked off at the 38 yard line by Patrick Sertan inside the 20 breeze can't tackle him and he finally gets rolled down at the six yard line by Eric Parker. So on third and two, a pick, and Miami will have a first and goal in their first offensive series. You know, and Patrick Sertan read that slant all the way. 
You're going to see him. He just starts out and then he trails it and then undercuts it. He's out here in the outside and you see he's underneath it and he trails it all the way. So he was undercutting that right from the moment of the cut. But you here you see he just runs right underneath it. He never did go for David Boston. David Boston kept gaining ground and Patrick Sertan just ran right underneath. So 117 into the game. Brian Greasy makes his Dolphin debut. Toe injury, ligament damage, left big toe in preseason, and he gives the ball to Ricky Williams, and Williams is tackled for no gain. Second down, Marcellus Wiley makes the tackle. The Dolphins, most picks since the year 2000, Darren Sharper with 23, and there's Sertan. That was his 19th. You know, and the guy on the other side, the corner on that other side, Sam Madison, they're sitting side by side there is pretty good too. And when you have two good corners, you can do a lot of things on defense. Second and goal now, two minutes into the game at the five yard line. Miami trying to cash in off the pick. And Greasy's first pass as a dolphin is caught for a touchdown. Chris Chambers. So Brian Greasy, whose father, Bob, was the Dolphin quarterback and Bob had so much success that he's in the Hall of Fame and here comes Bob's pup and his first pass as a Miami Dolphin and throwing it for a touchdown and I'll tell you he zipped it in there too. Chris Chambers is going to start outside and you see him make a little adjustment a little adjustment and he has a deep man running a corner and he runs right underneath it. Brian Greasy's watching and he just zips it in there perfectly. What are they do in that goal line you know those things are just legal picks. Olindo Mari for the point after and so it takes just 2 0 2 for Miami to come into Arizona and take the lead over San Diego. A taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Charles Schwab there's never been a better time for Charles Schwab. Cheerios still the only leading cold cereal clinically proven to reduce cholesterol. Cheerios good for the heart. And Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Stadium Gets Built. And Olindo Mari booms one into the end zone. That's his 11th touchback of the season. And San Diego. San Diego, we're with you. Our prayers are with you. Our emotion, mentally, physically, and emotionally. After this game, I'll be home. God bless you. Love you. Echoing the thoughts of, of just about everybody on the field. Well, you know, in Junior Say, I was is one that grew up there in the area of Ocean Heights High School and goes to USC and then comes back and plays his entire career with the Chargers. And, and that's his home, always has been and always will be. 13 years of Charger and 12 Pro Bowls as Tomlinson takes it up to the 25 yard line. It'll be second down five. So his days numbered in San Diego and out he went fifth pick out of SC 200 games and you can take a look at some of the other numbers old decade team and those 12 consecutive Pro Bowls and there's no question that someday he will be winding up with his bust on display in Canton Ohio second down and five from the 25 yard line Tom Linson. Trying to find some room, and Junior Say I couldn't tackle him, but he was able to stop him, slow him up. It'll be third down. Well, you know, Junior Say I was a name, and that other guy's a pretty good name too. That Zach Thomas. If you say, you know, who's the dominant linebacker on this group? It's not Junior Say I was Zach Thomas, and that's a guy that if if you're going to make a run, you're going to have to get a block on Zach Thomas because he's going to make the tackle. Zach Thomas gets to the ball and he doesn't miss tackle. Third down and a long three, and again, Breeze out of the gun. And this was a situation in which he threw the interception moments ago. And this is caught by Eric Parker, who was across the 30, and they will give him forward progress far enough over the line that it's a first down. It was pretty good by Drew Breeze there. He, he saw the blitz. We were talking about Zach Thomas and the types of things that he does on that play. He blitzes, so he knows that there's going to be one less guy underneath. So if he gets rid of the ball quickly, he's going to have something out there. See, here comes Zach Thomas right there, and that's when Drew Brees had to get rid of that ball. San Diego's first first down of the game now from the 31-yard line. 
Breeze is going to swing it out to Tomlinson, and Tomlinson is able to escape Greenwood and pick up about five before he is run out of bounds by Patrick Sertan. Yeah, and Tomlinson is is so good. You know, you talk about him as a runner. You know, the moves and the speed and all that, but. He's also the number one receiver on this team. So, you know, we talk about how you know San Diego says they have to stop Ricky Williams. It's the same thing with the Chargers. When you play the Chargers, the number one guy, probably the number two guy, maybe even the number three guy, is Ladanian Tomlinson. Right up to the minute, 33 catches for him this year. It's funny, he's averaging more per rush than he is per catch. 5.7 on the ground, 5.6 when he's a receiver. Now Bree steps up and throws, and it's batted in the air and picked off by Zach Thomas. Off Tomlinson's hands. Miami with its second interception. Thomas trying to pick up blocking and gets the ball inside the 25 before the center, Corey Raymer, finally tackles him. You know, and that Zach Thomas is, is something, you know, we talk about how he plays against the run, but he's just a football player. I mean, he's always going to be in the right situation. Tomlinson is going to come in across here. And you see Drew Brees, he steps up, he's, he's working well in the puck. Here comes Tomlinson, the ball looks like it hits right off his left shoulder. See, he steps up, steps up, now watch the ball. It comes in, it hits off his left shoulder, up in the air, and Zach Thomas is right there. His first pick of the year, he had one interception all of last season, and it came against San Diego in Miami. Now Ricky Williams is going to try to turn it back and turns right into Kwame Lassiter, former Arizona Cardinal. You know you hate to jump on something too quickly but we were talking about focus you know and having focus and then losing focus and and then refocusing again don't you feel early in this game maybe that Miami has it more than the, the, the Chargers do no question I think Miami has a distinct advantage with the change of venue not only the home field but the emotional situation second down and ten from the twenty four. And that is a low pass, but it's caught by Randy McMichael. And even though, John, even though both teams feel it emotionally, and clearly San Diego with family and friends and homes and all of the rest, I mean, it's uh, to them it's got to be magnified tenfold. Yeah, because it's a real drain on them. Because if it weren't their own homes and then families or or or, or their friends, they're affected directly or indirectly by this. Now Miami I think they had an advantage as you, as you as you say they weren't but they were traveling too. San Diego thought they had a home game. Miami was traveling so they just stayed in traveling mode. Just like they made one stop and came to Phoenix and that Greasy gets taken down at the 26 yard line by DeQuincy Scott and a big play because it takes them out of chip shot field goal range into the 44 45 yard range. Quincy Scott has real good speed and they bring him in as, as a defensive tackle and you're going to see he's going to make a stunt move here. You see he starts up and then he loops to the outside outside the defensive end. So you say how did he come from the from the outside. He didn't come from the outside. He started as a nose tackle. And this is a 44 yard attempt by Mate who missed two last week. One at the end of the fourth quarter one in overtime that could have beaten New England. But he's perfect here, and he gives Miami a 10-0 lead. Broncos will take on the New England Patriots. The Patriots on top in the AFC East. The Pats winning yesterday. They're 6-2, and two, and Miami is trying to stay a half game back if they can win this one tonight. Well, they let everybody in for free, as we said. We had no idea. When they announced yesterday that this game will be held here, our first thought was they won't put 5,000 people in here. I mean, who in the world is going to come to a game with these two teams on that short notice how will they and all of a sudden well they decided to let everybody in for free and that's the ticket free will usually win free will do it Tim Dwight up to the 23 yard line and we're going to estimate right now I'm thinking it's about 55 to 60,000 people in here in a stadium that holds 73,000 as we said yesterday 40,000 looked on for the Cardinal winning overtime over San Francisco. And when we come back, San Diego with the ball, down 10-0. An 18 that regular season mark, and his defense, which has played very well this season, has been the story in the early stages tonight. That was Sertan's fifth interception of the season. Then Thomas, 
off the bobble by Tomlinson and that led to a field goal so it's 10 nothing thanks to the defense and now San Diego tries to get something started from its own 23 yard line and that was Jason Taylor either coming across the line or he was induced by Damian McIntosh Ron Blum is the referee tonight for the ball set. ball start number 77 offense five yards still first down McIntosh so many little stories tonight among others I mean you can imagine the movement of people from San Diego into Phoenix among those the officials the officials had to get over here so they wound up flying with the Chargers and then the first call tonight is against the Chargers first down and 15 from the 18 yard line no frequent flyer marks. here's Tomlinson taken down at the 20 yard line you know it's funny you talk about the the front defensive line of the Miami Dolphins and their biggest player there is Jason Taylor and he's a he's a great pass rusher so we see one play where McIntosh jumps off sides and that's because he has to block Taylor so they know that on long yardage Taylor is going to play outside so that's when you want to run a draw on him so they let him go outside let him run up the field and then they run that delay or draw play inside and then the linebackers just get there and make the tackle second down and 13 from the 20 yard line Breeze under pressure little dump off and that goes to Lorenzo Neal the fullback tackled by Zach Thomas Drew Brees who's thrown those two picks tonight grew up in Texas he really wanted to go to Texas A&M but wasn't recruited they never gave him a sniff in fact the only school that really came after him the schools were Kentucky Purdue and he eventually wound up at Purdue and Brown he looked at Brown he could have gotten in his grades were great but he said you know what I want to play big time football and this is what he loves he was talking about the the shotgun he said most of his college days they played in the shotgun so he feels more comfortable in this formation than up under center rolling out across the grain on third and ten and he has the open man for a first down he was able to prolong the play long enough and Eric Parker was able to zig and zag and then cut across the field and on third and ten it's a 23 yard San Diego game yeah and that's the type of thing he says he loves to do he said this is like playground football he said you get in a shotgun the Dolphins come in a blitz now just come out here to the left you see he's going to start out here and just scramble to the left now all this is doing is buying time keep moving keep moving keep moving that buys a time so that this can happen on the other end Chargers approaching midfield six and a half to go in the period and now Tomlinson trying to get on track you know the Miami defense only you know you can look at a lot of numbers in the last five games they have not given up a run of 12 yards or more which is you know unbelievable when you think of the team normally runs about 25 or 30 times a game and that's how tough they've been you see that big guy there 64 Larry Chester he's a big part of that too I mean they have Tim Bowens and Larry Chester inside now their job is to plug up everything in the middle and don't let the guards and center get to Zach Thomas second and ten from the 46 Little screen set up to Tomlinson across the 50 and a first down and our first look tonight at the type of thing that Tomlinson can do and here's a guy who has played only two and a half seasons he's already had three 200 yard rushing games in his career the NFL record is six by O.J. Simpson and what they're working is this outside left Drew Brees does it on a scramble and then again they invite Jason Taylor up the field get him to rush and then they throw a screen pass to that side so you say Jason Taylor is a great player but they are working on him they're working on him with draws and screens so now Tomlinson comes out Jesse Chapman comes in and they give the ball to Neal who's been to the Pro Bowl Neal has been around and signed as an unrestricted free agent this season Lorenzo picks up about four what you have here strength against strength with Tomlinson and the San Diego running game and take a look at this as you can see the Chargers rank fourth in yards per game first in yards per carry and the Dolphins allow being ranked number one the fewest yards per game on the ground and their their opponents averaging just 2.9 yards a carry but they haven't played against LaDainian Tomlinson that's part of the reason 
Second down and six. Tomlinson, and that's uh, another part of the reason why Miami is so tough. They're right there with Junior Seau, and right now Tomlinson has been given the ball seven times, and he's gained 18 yards, so he's averaging just a little under 2.9 yards a carry against this run defense. You know, as we watch Junior Seau in this play, or he was saying last night, he said that but Damian Tomlinson is the best back that I've ever played with and he said after this game I'm going to say he's the best back that I've ever played against third down and six breeze taking the snap and the shotgun takes to Tomlinson swings it out to Tim Dwight turns the corner and the speedy Dwight is short of the first down by about three yards he's forced out of the 33 by Sam Madison. And now, if you're Schottenheimer, your choice is about a 50-yard field goal attempt. Bennett comes in to punt, or you go for it. Well, he already made the choice. He has his field goal team out there. And it will be Christie who will attempt a 51-yard attempt. The downside, of course, is that if he misses it, Miami would have the ball at its own 41. And Christie's kick is off the upright and through. So a carom shot and a 51 yard field goal attempt by Christie. And that pulls San Diego to within seven. 10 3 Miami. Here's your doink, John. Doink. Final noon Eastern time. Middle of the day, Oklahoma State and number one ranked Oklahoma, the headline game. And then on the West Coast at 4 o'clock, Pacific Washington State against Pete Carroll's USC fourth ranked Trojans. Pete Carroll's Trojans look pretty good, don't they? They look great. Boy, you throw that the Cal game as their only loss, the, the overtime loss. Field it at the seven yard line by Travis Minor. And we have a flag down, and when the flag is down, Back at the kicking team's 30, it can only be one thing. Somebody was offside. Right. On the kicking team. Right. <laughs> and the one guy it can't be is the kicker. I think that that call, that's more certain than when an umpire throws a flag on a running play. Yeah, or that deep guy throws the flag. It's always something on the tight end. But you're right. When it's thrown <laughs> on that line, it's someone offside. Number 52 for the kicking team. It's a five-yard penalty and a re-kick. Carlos Polk. Who committed a couple of penalties last week in Cleveland when San Diego was flagged a dozen times is the guy. Yeah, we were talking about Junior Seau and the respect that he has for Ladanian Tomlinson. There they are before the game, and see all the guys in there and talking about the things that they're going to do and have done and said and didn't mean to say and, and all those kinds of things but you talk about a guy having a respect for another guy Junior Seau has as much respect for a football player more Damian Tomlinson as you can have. Well this would have been Junior's homecoming in San Diego as most of you know but also been in the homecoming for Ricky Williams who grew up in San Diego and played his high school boy there. As Travis Miner takes it from the 11 yard line and brings it back up to the 35 yard line. And that's where Greasy and company come out to take over with three minutes to play in the period. 10 3 Miami. Please meet your party at the North. Trying to get to the outside and taken down by Ben Lieber. And let's take a look at this Miami offense. Brian Greasy, University of Michigan. Ricky Williams, the University of Texas. Rob Conrad, Syracuse. Chris Chambers, UW. Darius Thompson, Baylor. Randy McMichael, Georgia. Wade Smith, the University of Memphis. Jamie Nails, Florida and M University. Tim Ruddy, Notre Dame. Todd Perry, Kentucky. Todd Wade, Ole Miss. Just for the record, Chris Chambers, I University of Wisconsin, UW. When you hear UW, what do you think, though? <laughs> I was at University of Washington. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Second and 15. And this is Ricky Williams. Up past the 40 to the 41 yard line. And let's take a look at the San Diego defensive starters. Marcel's Vernon Wiley, Columbia. Jamal Williams, Oklahoma State University. Jason Fisk, Stanford. Adrian Dingle, Clemson. Ben Lieber, Kansas State. Zeke Moreno, USC. Donnie Edwards, UCLA. Quentin Jammer, Texas. Kwame Laster, Kansas University. Jerry Wilson, Southern University. Sammy Davis, Texas A&M. 
How proudly did Wiley say Columbia, huh? <laughs> very, very. Third down and four from the 41 yard line as Greasy throws off his back foot, caught, and that's James McKnight converting on third down to move the chains, and he's tackled there by Sammy Davis, who was their number one pick out of Texas AM. Yeah, you know, and that was way too much room on a blitz because you know that you have to be man to man. See, they're coming on a blitz. So look at this cushion right here. You know that anything can happen in this area here, and it can't be a zone. See, it's man to man because it's a blitz, and he was just playing off way too far. And if you're going, you know, at, at some point, if you're going to blitz, you want the quarterback to have to get rid of the ball quickly, and you want to get up and press him. And then Greasy is going to throw to the sideline, and that's caught there by Chambers. And there's a huge difference between these secondaries. Miami has four guys in the secondary who've been to the Pro Bowl. San Diego has four guys, all new starters. Three entirely new, and then last year, Jammer started for only part of the season. Right, and the play before, we saw Sammy Davis playing off. Now we see Quentin Jammer playing way off. You see that cushion he gives, and he's turned and looking back to the inside. And if he plays like that, the Dolphins can run that out pattern all night. And Jammer was a number one pick in 2002 so they're picking on the number ones and they'll go that way again and this time it is caught by James McKnight and he is close to a first down well, we're talking about doing it all night they're going to do it all night if they play off that far Brian Greasy a perfect beginning six of six for 62 yards and like father like son they become the Greasy's do the first father son combination to play quarterback for the same team. Bob, as I mentioned before, in the Hall of Fame. Brian coming over after five up and down years in Denver. Brian was bragging last night that his college team beat his dad's college team on Saturday. And this is Williams close to a first down, and Ricky Williams close to the yellow stripe, just outside the 10 yard line. You know, sometimes they say that Ricky Williams doesn't run hard enough, hasn't been running hard enough. He's a very powerful guy and and this offensive line of the Dolphins has been inconsistent. But if you give him a little crack or you give him some room and you get on that second level he's going to make runs. If you don't block for him no one's going to make runs. It's second and one when the second quarter begins end of one in Tempe Arizona. Miami 10 San Diego three and Monday Night Football is back after this message in the words from our ABC stations. Sun Devil Stadium Tempe Arizona most of you know if you're just tuning in late if you don't know this game scheduled for San Diego obviously because of the situation there and we'll have an update from ABC News about the fires at halftime move on very short notice here and the second quarter begins with Ricky Williams picking up a first down to make it first and goal and John they were able to pull this off in about seven hours Paul Tagliabu called the Cardinals you talked to Mike Bidwell yesterday the vice president general counsel said I think we have a problem in San Diego and seven hours later they announced they would be able to to pull it off here in Tempe yeah that was amazing because we didn't know it until seven o'clock last night and then and then that whole thing was pulled off before that we found out at seven o'clock last night and then and just think of the adjustment that all these people had to make here plus these teams had to make swing it out to Williams bobbles juggles catches it tackled by no Donnie Edwards is able to jar it loose geographically you can see the the icons there indicating the fires raging around San Diego Qualcomm Stadium to Sun Devil Stadium 308 miles so it's about a 50 minute flight Dolphins came in this morning Chargers actually landed a little after two o'clock mountain time with a seven o'clock mountain start went to a hotel met in the ballroom had a pregame meal and came right out here that was Greasy's first incompletion now he gives it to Ricky on the ground Ricky hesitates wanted to go right so that was jammed up goes left and takes it to the two or is tackled by Zeke Moreno you know the thing that Ricky does so well is is he has power but with his power he has great balance and you think he's down. I mean, you watch him here. He's going to hit in here, and then he just keeps going because he never stops his feet. You see, he gets here. It's a little delay play. He's going to try and hit what he calls the A-gap. He lets them declare, lets them make a move, declare where they're going, and then he goes where they just left from. <laughs> Once he came. Third down and goal. 
from the two. Greasy throws. Caught. Touchdown. James McKnight. He got position on the former Dolphin. Jerry Wilson has been playing well for San Diego. Makes the catch just across the goal line, and Greasy has thrown his second touchdown pass of the game. And Brian Greasy is perfect. We were talking to Norris Turner last night. He really felt good about Brian Greasy. And we're going to see McKnight as the inside receiver. And you see one just runs up the field, and McKnight rubs off him and runs a quick out. Mate for the extra point. And so Jay Fiedler's knee sprain gives Greasy the opportunity to make his Dolphin debut, and he's thrown to the end zone twice, 17 to 3. It's 17 3 Miami, and Olindo Mare will be kicking off. Doug Flutie had been the quarterback up until two years ago, and then Breeze took over, and Doug, who just turned 41 last week, is the San Diego backup. And very comfortable as a backup and really helping Drew Brees out. You know, he's accepted that role and he's enjoying it and he's playing it very well. Tim Dwight, former Falcon from the goal line. And the one time Big Ten sprinter up to the 27 yard line. Again, Junior Seau mic'd up. Let's listen. When we penetrate, if we make him cut early before he wants, we win. It don't matter if you miss the tackle. It don't matter if you don't got the tackle. Make him cut. They ain't hurting us from now. What I'm telling you is don't allow them to dictate what I'm doing back and forth. Once I get somewhere, let me go. I got the pre-snap ring. Make him cut. He's talking about Tomlinson. Yeah, and, and what he's talking to, he was talking to Tim Bones and Larry Chester as two big defensive tackles in there get penetration and make them do something quickly something they've been doing all night in fact all season and there again Tomlinson bottled up in Ladanian tonight has carried eight times for 16 yards yeah and that's exactly what they did on that play what junior was just talking about it all starts right here you have to get penetration you have to control this part of the line of scrimmage see because of that there's no cutback so then there's a no place that he can go to the outside. See Jason Taylor, he has the outside. He has a contain. He forces him back into the inside where there's where those two big tackles are dominating. Second and 12 now from the 25-yard line early in the second quarter. Miami up by 14. Breeze stepping up, avoids a sack against the grain again, rolls, throws for Tomlinson, and it's incomplete. Along the far side, Jason Taylor put the pressure on, and let's check in with Lisa. Hey, Al, when you talk about the San Diego sports community, two men stand out above the rest, Tony Gwynn and Junior Seau. I talked to Tony the other day, who is now, by the way, the baseball coach at San Diego State University, about the impact that Junior had on that community. He said, look, his impact on the field was obvious. People uh, thought that he was a great source of pride for the Chargers, but his impact outside the lines as a community leader was impressive. He also said, Tony, that he was very, very upset when he was traded. He felt that uh, he was really, really disappointed as, as a Chargers fan. He said, speaking strictly as a fan, I was ticked off. He, he speaks for a lot of Charger fans after 13 seasons there, and that pass on third and long, incomplete intended for Parker, and it's three and out. Well, you know, the thing with Junior Seau and the San Diego Chargers, he was, he was a heart and soul of that team, and I think that you know, in the locker room, everyone fed off him. And, and I think that all the guys learned how to be pros off him. And you take someone like that out of there, you replace the body, but you don't replace that heart and soul of the team. Darren Bennett to punt, and Sam Simmons will run it back for Miami. Bennett, the Aussie, to the 25 yard line, and Simmons comes straight up the middle. And is tackled at the 37. So early in the second quarter, the game dominated thus far by Miami with their two turnovers and 17 points. 17 3. There's a, a Tomlinson, a young Tomlinson fan. I'm trying to get a, a feel for this crowd as to which team they're rooting for. From the 36, it's an end around, and they give it to Chambers. You know, John, we, we came over here. Of course, San Diego's 300 miles away, and Miami is more than 2,000 miles away. But 
I saw a lot of a lot of dolphin shirts in the parking lot. That was the thing that that impressed or or surprised me as we drove in here was the amount of dolphin shirts. And you wonder where they all came from. I mean, they didn't know that there was no way that they knew before seven o'clock last night that this game was going to be played here. And how they all got here with those dolphin shirts, I'm not sure. Second down and three. I mean, they they, they flew in brand new. Well, they they flew in, paid a premium fare for that, and then got in for free. So it's a wash from the 43-yard line. Williams to the 50-yard line. So Ricky coming up, and we're very close to the landing pattern at Sky Harbor Airport as Ron Blum is going to make the call. And that, that happened just about two minutes ago, but you'll see that all night, the silhouette of a plane coming in for a landing. It's as close as I've been into an airplane in <laughs> yes. over 20 years. You came close last night, though. It's a good thing the Madden Cruiser was able to make it from San Diego to Phoenix. Uh, I knew I knew I had plenty of time. I left at 7:30 last night and got here to Phoenix at three in the morning. Yeah, I finally get a home game living in L.A. and I have to drive 250 miles round trip to get a plane to come here. Second and 13 from the 33-yard line. And Greasy swings it to the outside and it's caught by Williams and he's taken down to the 30 after. The Miami penalty had pushed them back, and Kevin House makes the tackle. You know, an interesting thing, excuse me, I'll, uh, I think tonight, you know, Brian Greasy starting, we know that, but Jay Fiedler isn't even the second quarterback. Sage Rosenfeld is the second quarterback, and Jay Fiedler is the third or emergency quarterback. And, you know, I don't, I mean, I think that's a temporary thing, you know, second or third, but I don't know. That Brian Greasy being the starter is a temporary thing. I agree with you. If Brian Greasy has a big time game tonight, I think he starts next week. No matter what Fiedler's condition is against Indianapolis in Miami, and he swings it out to Randy McMichael, who makes the catch. And McMichael is taken out of bounds well shy of the first down by Jerry Wilson. But the numbers on Greasy right now, nine of ten for 71 yards and two touchdowns. And you know when we were talking to the offensive coordinator of the Dolphins last night Norv Turner you just you just felt that he had a confidence in Brian Greasy. You know he hadn't played it down for the Dolphins yet this year but you knew that they were going to try and stop Ricky Williams and he thought that Brian Greasy was going to be able to do some pretty good things. And I think Dave wants that very much shared that confidence as Matt Kirk's trip is a short one fielded at the 24 yard line by Eric Parker and he's tackled right there. Marker. You know, does it seem like there's more penalties this year than there's ever been? It seems that way. I think we did the numbers a couple of weeks ago. It was marginally higher. It's one of the highest uh, averages in a long time, but it's, it's marginally higher than than last year. The penalty is going to be against Miami. They watched it says what? Yeah. Anytime you put your hands out like that, your palms up. That means, what's the call? Hands to the face, number 80 of the kicking team. Five yard penalty and forced from the end of the run. Timeout. That's James McKnight, the guy who scored the touchdown. 10 10 to the half. Miami 17, San Diego 3. Was hosting the New England Patriots, making their only. Monday night appearance of the season ESPN Sunday night that's a good one Packers against the Vikings who suffered their first defeat yesterday for the Giants as Tomlinson moves forward for about four LaDainian Tomlinson number one pick played his college football at Texas Christian and since coming to the Chargers and it's a little less than two and a half seasons you can take a look at some of the numbers he has put up and where he would rank among guys at that particular point in their career the first over the first two years but tonight against this Miami defense which has been brilliant throughout the season nine carries for 19 yards Miami plays run defense as well as anyone in the NFL and that's thrown over the middle and it's caught on the run on a crossing pattern by David Boston and the Arizona Cardinal who played at Ohio State and signed with San Diego as a free agent. He's huge. 
He's fast. He's also mercurial. He was suspended earlier this season because of conduct detrimental to the team. And you can hear that they did not like David Boston by the end of his career in Arizona as the first real boo of the night. Well, you don't know who who is. <laughs> right. <laughs> you think those who are the people that are Cardinal fans because you know when San Diego got him, he was supposed to be something special, and I thought he was too. I thought he was really going to help this team because, as you said, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. But he comes in there and then he gets an injury, and then he comes back, he gets suspended, and they have a bye. They've never gotten on the same page. He and Drew Brees, 28-yard reception, and that's a gain of three. But he shows his brilliance in games like following the suspension against Jacksonville, when he had a huge game, catching 14 passes for 181 yards. And there you can see the numbers that tremendous season with Jake Plummer throwing him the ball in 2001. Well there's no question that David Boston's a player you know and, and the thing is you have to you get him in the system and he has to you know as they say he has to keep his head on straight or do those kinds of things and then you know he can play this game at a very very high level. Second down and seven from the 35 yard line. Breeze swings it out caught. Tomlinson steps out of a tackle and steps out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Marlon Greenwood couldn't make the stop and he picks up a first. So eight minutes to go in the half. San Diego trying to answer the Miami drive down 17 to three. You know, I was talking to Tomlinson the other day and I asked him if he's always been a running back. He said, no, and Pop Warner, he said the coach wanted to make him a quarterback and he said, I'm not a quarterback I'm a running back and the coach says look you're going to be a quarterback but you're just going to run the ball every place it'll be the same thing <laughs> first and ten at the 25 yard line Tom Winston a spin move but he was stopped in the backfield early by Larry Chester and let's check in with Lisa Al David Boston told me the other day that his outburst this year were because of frustration with his own lack of productivity now when I asked if he was comfortable with Drew Brees as his quarterback yet and he said I'm comfortable with Drew I just don't think that he is comfortable with me this other source of frustration was the quote lethargic way the Chargers are practicing in his opinion Wednesday through Friday he said we don't prepare like we want to win I also have an injury update for you Al the Chargers Sammy Davis was just carted off the sideline with a left ankle injury mm. his return is questionable he's going into the locker room right now for further evaluation so we'll keep an eye on whether he can return or not in the sound effect behind Lisa was a guy came out a streaker came out onto the field and was summarily escorted out second down and 10 from the 25 yard line is that guy naked I thought he was I did too. we are so high and we might as well be calling this game from the blimp it's thrown out of bounds and it will be third down he actually had his shorts on I'm now told by people who were closer to the situation <laughs> And I'm not I'm not dissing my alma mater here but you know we're on a college campus and I think half the school has to be here tonight. I'm not saying the guy comes out of you know Arizona State's uh, academic program but <laughs> but I would say the odds in Vegas are about three to five. They were they, they were wild down there Number tonight. I was I was there earlier. The was illegally downfield to five yard penalty repeat second down. I think the guy was actually from the University of Arizona. Well, you know, it was like a big fraternity party down there about two or three hours before the game. I think they just brought a party in and brought it in here. The other guy that makes this play is Jason Taylor. Watch him on the line, on the end of the line over here. Here he is, excuse me. That, that, that he feels him coming and then he just drops off. Watch him. He starts up the field. He feels. He sees Tomlinson coming, then he just drops off and he gets between Tomlinson and the quarterback. Second and 15 after the penalty. Play action, but the pressure is on, and then Breeze throws this one, and Tomlinson can't make the catch. Juggled. Zach Thomas was there covering, and incomplete. Here we talk about how Drew Breeze maybe doesn't feel comfortable with David Boston. He sure does feel comfortable with Tomlinson, though. I mean, he would. It looks like he would like to just hand the ball off to him. When he doesn't hand the ball off to him, just throw to him. Because you can see here, he was looking at him even before he started to scramble. Then he scrambles to his side, comes out of it, and throws it to Ladainian Tomlinson. Third and 15, with a little under seven minutes to play, first half, and the game moved from San Diego to Tempe, Arizona. Because of the wildfires in San Diego, ABC News is a report coming away 
at the half on that situation. Third down and 15, and this is Boston making the catch, but he's short of the first down by three. Tackle by Patrick Sertan. So fourth and three, down by 14. A team that's having difficulty scoring. And what's Marty going to do right here? Yeah, it looks like he's going to go for it. Well, he's going to call a timeout for yep. starters. That's that's what he's going to do <laughs> because he didn't put his his field goal team in, so he's either going to go for it or take a timeout and talk about it. Fourth down when we come back. A touchdown pass to McMichael, and it's been all Miami on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and I think I think the Dolphin fans and the Dolphin coaches and Dolphin players have to feel real good about Brian Greasy. I mean, just. Just watching him out here in his first half, and I know he had good field position. He got the lead. He's playing with the lead, but he looks so comfortable and cool out there. He looks a lot different than when he was struggling at Denver. Well, I mean, Jay Feather with a sprained knee, and it's it's he really does have one. <laughs> but how in the world if Greasy plays fairly well even in the second half? How do you make a quarterback change if Feather's healthy next week? I don't think they do. I mean, I you know I said earlier that. That I don't think that this is a temporary thing. Now, if Brian Greasy doesn't play well, or if Brian Greasy gets injured again, then it could be temporary. But I think if the if the Dolphins win and he keeps playing like this and playing as as comfortable he is and as confident he is, he's going to be the Dolphin quarterback. I don't think people realize. I mean, Miami, if they win tonight, how close they would be to being unbeaten. I mean, they lost to Houston at the end of the game. I mean, a shocking upset on opening day. Last week they had every chance to win and Monty missed two field goals that would have won. They're that close to being seven and oh. I think the Dolphins it's all about what they do in the playoffs. I mean it's you know getting there is one thing but I don't think that's enough. I mean I think the Dolphins have to get to the playoffs and I think they have to win in the playoffs to really be considered successful. Absolutely I agree as they try to bring a, a second world title to South Florida following the Marlins last week. 24-3 Miami in the second half coming up from Arizona after this. One great benefit of going to school here is that on the last Monday in October, John, you can do that at about uh, 6.45. No, what is it? It's uh, 8.45 local time. Yeah, there's a couple swimmers in there now. Now, if you go across this way, that's a short course. And if you go this way, that would be the long course. Is that it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we have to go through here to go the long course, right? Uh, yeah. So I guess I you, no didn't, clue. you didn't swim much down here in no. the, like the long course. No, I did a few other things. <laughs> well, did you swim the short course? Once in a while, we'd go swimming at about 1.40 in the morning, but they didn't have that center there at this particular time. <laughs> Look at that pool. I mean, you could, you could swim... Across, you can go across this right. way. You can go across this way, right? You could go down this way, and this thing could break you. Or can you get through here? You think? I don't. Th I think you can do. Well, I know you can do water aerobics, deep pump. I don't know. I see a lot of lines, and anytime you see a lot of lines, it has to be confusing to someone. I, I guess you you could play water pole, and then you've got all of those tennis courts, and the facilities here are you know fantastic. Uh, these Arizona State has a long and storied baseball tradition. Don't forget Reggie Jackson, Sal Bando, and Rick Monday went to school here. And Reggie Jackson was a very good defensive back. I saw that with mine own eyes, John. You know, and I always, I never saw that with mine own eyes, but <laughs> my own eyes. But, but I believe it. Just watching Reggie Jackson. You know, play baseball when he played for Oakland, the Yankees, and all those teams. I always thought he looks like a baseball player that was a football player. He was a starting cornerback for Frank Cush. There, there's only one golfer that I know that really played true college football. Mike Cypher's kick. Travis Minor. Up to the 21. And that man was. I'm not going to tell you right All now. All right. Let's get a report from Lisa, then we'll come back to it. Lisa. Hey, Marty Schottenheimer was fired up during halftime, even if his players didn't seem fired up in the first half at all. From the tunnel outside of the locker room, I heard him yell, this is embarrassing. This is a test. Get your heads up and play this game. Guys. 
I can hear him saying that too. Well, and, and it, it was embarrassing that first half. They just couldn't get anything going, and then when they did, they would they would follow it up or 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 give a turnover, and they let Brian Greasy really get too comfortable. Sammy Davis, the cornerback, 22, who was carted off in the first half, is back in the lineup as we start the second half, and the catch is made by Darius Thompson. Take a look at the numbers through the first half, and uh, the key figure here clearly the bottom one, because those three turnovers led to two touchdowns and a field goal. And then, of course, you know the Chargers aren't good enough to play uphill. So, you know, as a result of those turnovers, then the Dolphins turn them into touchdowns, and then the Chargers have to play uphill. Junior's had a tight hamstring. In fact, he didn't play in overtime last week because of it, so they stretched that out. Second down and four. Ricky Williams for the of two. And the, the golfer you were talking about went to Colorado, correct? Right, Hale Irwin. You bet. And he's the only guy that, you know, I mean, you look at other sports and you say, did that guy play football? And like I said, Reggie Jackson, you look at him, you say, but you don't see a lot of golfers out there in the pro tour that ever played football. But Hale Irwin was a legitimate one. I mean, I mean, he was a defensive back at the University of Colorado. I think he was like all conference or something. I mean, he was a real deal. Duffy Waldorf looks like he could have. No, he Craig didn't Stadler, play. He, no, looked, no, he looks no, like he no, could have. No. <laughs> Stadler went to USC. Duffy Waldorf went to UCLA. Didn't play. You got the report right here. <laughs> Third down and two. DNP. <laughs> and it's caught out in the flat by James McKnight, and that's a Miami first down on their opening possession of the second half tackle there by Jerry Wilson. You know, and that's maybe one of the reasons that Brian Greasy feels so comfortable. He's not getting any pass rush, and the secondary is off. I mean, they're, the the whole first half they gave too much cushion, and they're doing it now. You you can just see when they get here that they just drive the guys off. See, they start here and they get a bump there, and then and then there's just there's, there's just no one up tight. I mean, if you're going to get up there, you have to hit him and knock him off the route. From the 35-yard line, back to rookie they go. And again, this has not lived up to its billing as the battle of the running backs, because for Ricky Williams, that's 10 carries tonight for 24 yards. Ladanian Tomlinson, 12 carries for 26 yards. You know, and Ricky Williams' biggest play was probably that touchdown to Randy McMichael when they went the play-action pass down there near the goal line and just sucked everyone up, and McMichael was able to get in behind them for a touchdown. Second and nine now. There are the numbers on Ladanian tonight, who came in off a 200-yard performance at Cleveland last week. And that is off the fingertips of Chris Chambers, who started to slip third down. Ryan Greasy threw it at the right time. You know, they have that that fade where the where the wide receiver just runs him up and then if, if the defensive back is on top of him he just stops and they call that a fade stop Now I don't know if that was a fade stop or if Chambers just fell down let's watch it it's right out here you see he starts up there like he's going fade yeah I think I think that was a fade stop because Brian Greasy, you know, usually if they slip, they'll throw throw the ball out of bounds. Oh, well, that was only a second incomplete pass, and then jumping the snap was Chris Chambers. Speaking of golf, Ron Blum is a golf professional. You ever get a free lesson? I have. Ball start. Number 84, offense. Five yards. Repeat third down. Loosen the grip, he told me two or three years ago. And then give me a bill for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, Chris Chambers jumps here. That should never happen. I think he's looking in here. He says dingle jump, and he thinks the ball is snapped because he's looking in to see the ball snap. He sees the defensive end move, and he thought that was the snap of the ball. I would think he thought. <laughs> Third down and 14 from the 30-yard line. Ricky Williams on a screen comes back to the near side but is now surrounded by a bunch of blue shirts led by Sammy Davis. Adrian Diggle made a nice play on that one. He, he, he came all the way from the right defensive side all the way across the field to get Ricky Williams to stop and change directions. Matt Turk comes in now for his second punt. Matt Turk has good posture for a punter. 
Big 6'5, 250. You know how straight his back is? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> and it has to be. He has to be 6'5. And he's going to take off with it. And now he's going to attempt to throw it. But instead, he's going to run with it. And he gets it up to the 39 yard line. But he is still about six yards shy of the first down. So that was going to be a kick. And then a run. And then a pass. And then a run. And Jeff Grau with the snap. And when you snap one over a guy who's six feet five, that's a bad snap. Yeah, I think he still could have punted it though. There was no, there was no rush. There was no punt block on. Watch him. The ball is snapped at 12 o'clock. But, but, but he gets it here. Look, he has plenty of time. There's no rush. He could have just taken a couple steps and kicked that thing. Yeah, they set up a return. He needed 13 yards, and he got seven. And so San Diego with a golden chance if they're ever going to get back in the game, it has to happen right here. From the 39, it's a double reverse, and Dwight puts it in his left arm, and Dwight flips down the sideline and picks up 10 yards. David Boston had it first, and then he gave it back to Dwight. You know, and that's the type of thing you think they have to start doing some of these things on first down. You know, that anytime you get good field position, you get a turnover, this is when you go for that type of play. Tim Dwight has speed and is a good open field runner. He just runs out of real estate over there. But I think they have to do some of those things. Plus, they have to start throwing a little more on first down. The Chargers do. It was short of the first there. He gained nine. Second down and one from the 29-yard line. And Tomlinson tackled after a very short gain, close to a first. Spot the ball of the. 28 yard line the big guys for the Chargers tonight breeze a forgettable first half Tomlinson a forgettable first half Boston three receptions for 57 yards on the other side Greasy a great first half Ricky Williams not much there numbers wise Chambers caught three including a 51 yarder and a touchdown yeah those are the two things I think the Chargers have to do is start throwing more on first down and get the ball to David Boston Here's the first down play, and he will throw, and he swings it to the outside. And that's Tomlinson, and Tomlinson steps out of bounds, a yard or two shy of the first down at the 18-yard line. You know, it's a lot easier. I mean, the first half, I thought that, that, that San Diego was in a rut, that they were running when they were supposed to run, and they were passing when they were supposed to pass, and they were just playing right into the Dolphins' hands. And that was a 10-yard pickup. He got enough for the first down. Looked like he'd, he'd come up a little short. But he wasn't stopped until he got to the 18. As he goes out of bounds, first and 10 now at the 18-yard line. Early third quarter. Miami up by 21 to Tomlinson. Bottled up again. 15-yard line off of Lorenzo Neal block. And here is Junior Seau mic'd up again. We gotta run! We gotta run! We gotta run! Go ahead, go ahead, baby. Yes. Fly. Ball in that play. Junior Seau thinks that he knows what they're gonna do, but I will tell you this about Junior Seau. He's been known to guess. <laughs> Here's Tomlinson inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Yeah, that's the way. I mean, he's played that way for years, and he will blow up things. I mean, if he if he guesses right, he's going to meet you in the hole on your side of the line. Again, now San Diego in the red zone, where they've been the worst in the league. Miami defending in the red zone, where they've been the best in the league. Last time San Diego was down here, Sertan picked one off in the end zone. Third and one from the nine. I think this is a running situation. Tomlinson. And he gets stopped again. That Miami run defense is fabulous. Brock Marion comes up from safety to stop him. You know, one of the things we had on Junior Seau mic'd up where you said, you know, make him cut right away. Don't let him cut when he wants to. Dictate when he's going to cut. Watch it right here. You see, he wanted to make that cut there, and he couldn't. He was forced that he had to go right into the defenders. So fourth down upcoming and the clock is stopped. 
because Corey Raymer, the center, is shaken up, and he's the second teamer because Jason Ball is their starter, and he's inactive tonight because of an injury. So whoever's going to snap the ball on fourth down to Drew Brees is going to be the number three center. So somebody's going to have to come over from one of the other spots along the line. And Michael Keithley is coming into the game. Here he is. Listed as a tackle, but he's going to have to be the center on this play. So fourth and one, down by three touchdowns, approaching the halfway mark of the third quarter. No time for a field goal. I wouldn't expect a straight run here. I would think something off a straight run. A toss. Tomlinson, can he turn the corner? He cannot. And again, San Diego inept in the red zone, and the Dolphins terrific. I think that was a combination of the two things we know about Miami. Great in the red zone and great against the run. Number one in the NFL. Still a 21-point game. Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. Miami on top, 24 to 3. Justin Peel, the San Diego tight end, was hurt on that fourth down play, and there he goes. Injury to insult here after they get stopped on fourth down. And Miami takes over at its own 15 yard line. Now the one thing I'll say that this this Miami defense really does spring out the run They're powerful inside so you just can't run right at them so you just keep going down the line. They have good linebackers they have good secondary. Well the Charger blockers are doing a very good job either. I mean they aren't giving Tomlinson much room to run. From the 15 yard line Ricky Williams. Yard and a half. You know, one of the things that, that they were talking about is having the wide receivers block the corners and let Tomlinson deal with the safeties but the wide receivers have to do a better job than this. Here's David Boston. Now he's trying to get position. And in doing so, he let Patrick Sertan just run right by him. I mean, you just got to go and get up on the guy. Do something. Don't let him get a free run at your guy. On a fourth down play. Second down and nine. From the 16-yard line. And Greasy has nobody to throw to. And it'll be third down and nine. Let's check in with Lisa. Thanks very much, Al. I'm with Dean Spanos, the president for the Chargers. Dean, I know that so many people in the San Diego County community were affected by these fires, continue to be affected by these fires. Was there any thought at all given on your part by canceling the game rather than just changing venues? Uh, there was a lot of discussion of it yesterday, and I talked to Coach Schottenheimer two or three times. He got some feedback from the players, and they felt like they wanted to go ahead and play, and uh, give it their best today so that's why we're here and he thought it was in the best interest of the club are the Chargers planning to do anything specifically financially to help those victims well as you know tonight we've asked all the fans that came here to make a contribution if they possibly could and my understanding is our expectations are that we might be able to exceed five hundred thousand dollars tonight so with that we hope in the next few days to come up with a definitive plan to complement that to help the victims in San Diego. Dean, there was so much optimism coming into this year with the Chargers. Where do you feel your club is at right now? Well, we're struggling right now, as you know. We're young. Uh, I think we have a, a, a great group of players here. I think we have a great coach, uh, but it just takes time, unfortunately. And, you know, we always set our expectations high, but uh, I still have a lot of confidence in these people here. Dean, thank you very much. I'll back up to you. All right, thank you, Lisa. Been a long dry spell for the Chargers. You haven't postseason action in eight years after making that Super Bowl appearance in 94 one more time to the playoffs and and now it's been dry after that punt San Diego has it back but they're still down 24 to 3 in Tempe Arizona next Monday to mile high we go the Patriots on top in the AFC East the Broncos with Plummer hurt Burline hurt Danny Cannell yesterday in Baltimore. They lose to the Ravens. They're home next week. Always tough at mile high against New England on Monday Night Football. On first and ten, they swing it out to David Boston. 
And with a marker down, he is taken down at the 47-yard line. Back it comes. Holding against Holding San Diego. Number 77, offense. 10 yards, repeat first down. Damian McIntosh again. I think he just took Jason Taylor right down. You know, you see that shot of Marty Schottenheimer, and you know exactly what he's feeling. That, you know, that he can't get this thing turned around. You know, you, you, you lose momentum, and then you try and get it back. You think you have it back, and then boom, you lose it again. You, you try a reverse, you try a trick play, you try throwing on first down, and he just can't get anything going. You get a first down off a, 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 an attempted field goal, and then you throw an interception in the first half. And then they give it to Tomlinson. He takes it up to the 45-yard line. You know, when they got Tomlinson, one of the things you might recall is that San Diego had the first pick. They could have picked Michael Vick, but chose instead to trade that pick to Atlanta. And then the Chargers got a first-round pick that turned out to be Tomlinson. The third-round pick, Tay Cody, was waived. Rache Caldwell, a wide receiver, and Tim Dwight came in that trade from Atlanta so they gave up the chance to get Vic but did wind up with Tomlinson second and 13 and that is incomplete and John you know one of the things I mean they were burned so badly I mean one of the worst draft picks in modern times was when they picked Ryan Leaf as that's, the second choice that's where I think the downfall of the Chargers really started I mean that that thing that you know they, they took Ryan Leaf there was Peyton Manning there and Ryan Leaf who was better Peyton Manning Ryan Leaf the Colts took Peyton Manning. The Chargers took Ryan Leaf, and he wasn't the guy. And then they had to dig out of that hole. And then when Mike Vick is available, I think they were still shell shocked from Ryan Leaf. I really do. I think I think that Ryan Leaf pick really took a lot out of this franchise. And then Flutie was the quarterback for a couple of years, and then Breeze came in, and Drew was picked in the second round in 2001. He's under pressure here, almost gets sacked, swings it out to Tomlinson. And Tomlinson takes the ball to the 50-yard line, where he's about eight yards shy of a first down, and they're forced to punt. I was talking about how you know Marty has to feel you know and trying to get something going, but when you really look at it, the big thing is is their players are better than your players, and you know you have to get more good players. You don't have enough good players in this team. And right now on the verge of. Going to a one and six mark. They've already had their bye as this team concludes the eighth week of the NFL season. Darren Bennett used to play Australian rules football. As his punt fair caught at the 15 yard line by Sam Simmons. So 455 remaining in the third, and this game moved to Arizona. And Miami owning the night 24 to 3. Three Miami. Now everybody was let in for free tonight but they tell me there was no way to, to to count the house. Apparently they either didn't come through turnstiles or there's no way to to quantify it and it's a nice sign right there from the 14 yard line as Miami begins this drive with a swing pass out to Ricky Williams. Picks up about eight. Some of the uh, the Cardinal officials as a flag goes down are estimating about 63,000. John, I am going to say 58,216. I think you can say whatever you want to because <laughs> if they didn't count them and they had no way to count them, it can be whatever you Pass say it first. is. Number 84, offense. 10 yards. Repeat first down. Chambers pushing off, but this stadium holds 73,000. Some of the people have begun to, to leave, a lot of the students with early classes tomorrow <coughs> <laughs> or other activities later tonight and that would be if it's if it's more than 58,000 it would be bigger than any crowd drawn by the Cardinals this season yeah MNF OA very nice thank you I got I got tickets John for all my old professors tonight that's that's a way to pay him back because <laughs> <laughs> come on all of you come on come on down be my guest come one come all <laughs> plenty of good suits available First and 17 after the penalty call. Williams to the 10. You know, I see Sammy Davis, the, the rookie corner for the Chargers, is back in there. Remember earlier, we had him going off, and 
whatever he had, it must be better now. You talk about learning on the job. Sammy Davis is learning on the job. He was a first round pick, you know, and a and a good player, but when you're a rookie corner and you're playing on a team that doesn't have a good pass rush, they are going to test you. Get a guy named Sammy Davis and Jammer on the other side. This defense ever turns into a, a big time defense. They'll be known as the Rat Pack. Second and 14. They give it to Williams again, and Ricky picks up five up to the 15 yard line. Third and long coming up. Gene Smith is the athletic director at Arizona State, and Mike Chismar is the associate athletic director. And those guys were extremely instrumental in being able to, to do this as we said the NFL office yesterday didn't even contact the Cardinals until uh, their game had already begun against San Francisco and somehow within seven hours they were able to to figure out a way to get this thing played tonight and I think kudos have to go to all those people I mean this is just amazing how you know, at seven o'clock last night you didn't even know there was going to be a game here third down and nine easy throws and reaching up did he make the catch? No, he didn't. Darius Thompson couldn't hold on incomplete. They were just thinking the same thing we were talking about. We were talking about Sammy Davis over there, and and, and if you're going to take a shot, you want to take a shot on a rookie corner, you know that they're going to do it. He plays it pretty well, except that the thing that he has to learn is turn your head back. You see, if you're if you're playing into the guy and you don't turn back, they're going to call pass interference on that more than not. In fact, I think he got called with, uh, on one last week. He did. Yeah. Fourth down. Kirk to kick. Forty yard line. Good punt coverage by Miami. They're good in all phases of the game tonight. Corey Jenkins and Tommy Hendricks are there after a 46 yard boot. 249 left in the third. 24 to three Miami. Miami as San Diego takes over at its own 41 yard line. 249 remaining in the third quarter. And Breeze begins taking the Tomlinson. Rolling. Chased by Chester. Picks up the first down, about nine more. You know, John, I've been with the show for 18 years, and we've had technicians and other people like Drew DeRosa who've been with the show since the top. And I know it's their job, but I mean, to do what these people did under these circumstances is phenomenal. Stu, Stu Strelzer, and there is Drew, Bob Simon, Keith Kais, Pat McGowan, just some of the guys who were all in San Diego up until 10.30 last night and somehow, some way, with about an hour's sleep, get into Tempe, Arizona and make this look like a regular Monday Night Football game. This crew is phenomenal. You know, and I agree, and I'm glad you said that now and didn't wait until the end of the game because I was just thinking the same thing. We're talking about people that have to adapt and adjust and under it. They were, as you say, they were setting up there. They had to move. They had to come over here, set up here, and there's not a glitch. I mean, not only the technical, but the production people and the job that they've done is amazing. And I'm not a big one to give kudos and those kind of things, but I agree a thousand percent with what you just said you had to be around to see I mean yeah you have everything set up in San Diego and then and this this happens in a heartbeat and away they come as they attend to to Larry Chester who is chasing on that plate chasing breeze as he gets up and, and to Fred Gadelli and to Drew Esikoff our producer and director and what they did and to Vinnie Rayo who was off the charts great I mean what and Zach and Zach who would have been running up any up and down any sideline. You had to carry all that stuff from San Diego. <laughs> Ball is being brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Cold down easy. The Hulk own the two disc DVD or video tomorrow. Dell flexible enterprise solutions that are easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. First and ten, San Diego. And there's a flag because Jason Taylor is so quick. He was too quick right there. And there's a flag on both sides of the field, so both officials saw Jason Taylor take off before the ball was snapped. You know, but I'll bet you just knowing Jason Taylor and his takeoff, it's against him, but I bet it was closer than it looked. Offside. 
Number 99 defense, five yards, repeat first down. Just knowing Jason Taylor, he's looking in at the ball. The way he's smiling, he really thinks that he got off. Now watch him, he's looking in at the ball. We're just gonna roll this on real time. Now watch the ball. I'll tell you, that is very, very close. You know, you don't want to be after the snap, and you'd like to be right on it, but you can't be before it. First and five from the 36-yard line. Tom Winston, he's got the first down before he's taken down by Sam Madison. John, we talked about the fact the Dolphins had gone five games without allowing a rush of 12 or more yards. It was 165 straight carries until Drew Brees on that quarterback in a rollout gained 18 to snap that streak. Yeah, and, and you know the reason is because they're good tacklers, and they're all good tacklers. And if you watch this Miami defense, usually the first guy that gets there, it's the end of the play. That guy goes down. There's not a lot of missed tackles, if any missed tackles, on this defense. Tomlinson from the 27. Game four. You saw the flag come in at the end of the play. You know, you, there's a number of ways to take away a running back, and one of them is to get ahead 24 to 3 because the Chargers can't continue just running Tomlinson now. Holding. Well, it's defensive holding. That's an automatic first down. You know, Tomlinson had to get a prescription to wear that shield. You can, you know, you can wear a regular shield, but you can't wear a tinted shield. And then his first six games, 5.7 yards of carry, and tonight he's just run into a group that is playing super defense. And that's been the hallmark of the Dolphins this season. The defense has been great. The offense has been erratic. But tonight, Greasy, a good night, even though Ricky Williams has been held in check. First down and 10 from the 19-yard line. And Miami has been able to cash in on its opportunities tonight. Now Tomlinson to the 15-yard line. You know, and those two things go hand in hand. If you're going to keep Ricky Williams in check, then that means you're going to you know, get that eighth man up, and, so, and the quarterback has to get the job done. That's That's when... Teams like that get in trouble when you when they bottle up the running back when they don't let him have anything and the quarterback can't do the job. That's what's happening to San Diego now. They're going after Tomlinson. They're trying to stop Tomlinson and Drew Brees hasn't gotten the job done. Second and six in the waning moments of the third quarter. Gets it away to Boston, and Boston is able to find his way close to a first down as he was finally dragged down by Sammy Knight. And the crowd again giving uh, their own Bronx cheer to David Boston, the former Cardinal. Yeah, I haven't been able to figure out who these fans are for, whether it's Miami or it's San Diego, but I have figured out who they're not for. <laughs> it's David yes. Boston. Right, enough of them, I guess, are, are, are Cardinal, I don't want to say devotees, but they follow the Cardinals enough to know that they, they felt that David Boston just never became what they hoped he would. And when you have a body like that and you're as quick as he is, I mean, the expectations are tremendous. Uh, at one point in his career, he looked like he was really going to break out, and then he went backwards. 24-3, Miami into three, and Monday Night Football from the Desert continues after this message from our ABC stations. John Madden, Lisa Guerrero, Tempe, Arizona. The neutral site is Miami leads San Diego 24-3. Local news coming up on your ABC station, except on the West Coast, ESPN as Sports Center. And here we go in the fourth quarter as San Diego is at the nine, first and goal, trying to climb back into the game, make it a two-touchdown game. And Tomlinson can only pick up one as Jason Taylor wrestles him down. They've been running most of the time in this drive, and you'd think at some point when you're down by 21, you're going to have to go after a, a, a quick one. You're going to have to start throwing the ball a little. Watch Jason Taylor here. We know that he's a good pass rusher, and he plays the run very well because he has good hands. He has long arms and good hands, and he gets his hands on you. Then he extends his arms and plays off that. 
second down and goal. And Breeze incomplete. Josh Norman was the intended receiver the first time they go his way tonight, tight end. I got to play for him, and it's a, you know, it's a slant corner because uh, we saw where a couple of those slants have been intercepted by Patrick Satan, and he's undercutting or running under once you start to do it. So what I would do is get here and, and say right here, you start in here like you're going to run a slant and then go back to the corner. So if they want to play, that's it. Run a, a slant corner on Patrick Sertan. Third down and goal. And instead, he's looking over the middle. He dumps it off. It's Tomlinson, and he gets taken down. So no slant corner, just a dump off. And Arturo Freeman makes the tackle, so it's fourth down and goal. Yeah, you know, and you just and you just look at what the Chargers are doing. It's not like they they haven't been in pretty good field position. They've been in good field position. They can't get off anything out there. That's that's one receiver out there. I, mean, I don't know what the heck he was running. He was running a thing. Here's Dwight. He's running an out right into into coverage, and then he throws it to Tomlinson. So that was a thing and an out and uh, incomplete pass and a nothing. Fourth down and goal. They have to go for it. Here they go again with all their red zone woes. And it's dropped. He dumped it off to Josh Norman, who might have been able to get in. But again, the pressure applied by Miami. They forced a little shovel. And it's still 24 to 3. With 13-25 left in the fourth. In gratis. First time in anybody's memory there wasn't an admission charge for an NFL game. I mean, going back to the inception of the league in 1920. And Miami now from the five yard line after taking over on downs and the pass is incomplete. And of course, the reason we are here is because of the disaster, the fires in, in Southern California, specifically in the last day and a half in San Diego. And of course, it, that has really touched Junior Seau. He had this to say earlier. This is a, definitely a, a time where we all need to just pray and, and hope the families are healthy and, and ready to go for you know, work on Monday and, and what have you. But uh, whenever you, you walk around San Diego and you see ashes and debris uh, in the air floating, there's definitely something wrong. And uh, that, that causes all of us to uh, just kind of sit back and, and look at it and, and, and really put everything in perspective. And that's life. And right now, while you listen to Say How, you saw Donnie Edwards force the fumble by Ricky Williams, and Quentin Jammer recovered it. So San Diego has another chance. And Marty now trying to get his team ready to at least punch it in from inside the two. There's Donnie Edwards. You saw him in the linebacker position, and he comes on what they call a run blitz. He's going to fill that hole. Watch him come up there right now. He makes Ricky Williams start to make the cut and he just pops the ball out of there and Quentin Jammer's right there. And we always talk about blitzing on running plays but you also have I mean, blitzing on passing plays but you also have rundown blitzes and that was just one of them by the Chargers. And now Miami will take a timeout as their defensive unit comes out onto the field but they might have sent out the base defense instead of a defense on first and goal from the one yard line. So they want to get regrouped and San Diego with a last gasp here a gift to get back in and again we brought this up earlier and here it is updated the Dolphins defense on 20 surges into their red zone have given up only two touchdowns the Chargers on the other hand have been into the red zone 17 times and have scored only four touchdowns so the best defense in the red zone the worst the offense in the red zone and Cam Cameron the offensive coordinator has four opportunities to get it into the end zone. Well, if you have a play that you really like here that's not a run, I think it's when you want to do it. Whether it be a bootleg or a, a play action pass, this is the best down to do it on. You don't want to wait until that second down where it becomes longer yardage, or you definitely don't want to wait till third down. If you're going to do it, if you have a play action pass or a bootleg, this is a down to do it. And they give it to the fullback. 
And there goes that play again, which they ran on second down earlier, John to no avail. Lorenzo Neal, nothing. Tim Bowen's right there. I hated that play before, and I hated that play right then. I think of all the all the choices that one would have, I think that would have to be on the bottom of the list. Now they have to think because because what you do when you hand it to the up guy or the fullback, you lose your lead. So what you're doing is you're not only you're handing it to your fullback, but you're not sending a lead in there with him. But at least by handing it to the tailback, you have this guy as a lead. And he's a great lead, too. That's why they picked him up this year. Fake to Tomlinson. Going to the end zone, and now it's third down. That's off the hands of Josh Norman, who had bobbled that shovel pass on the last series. Third down. See, and that's the one I would run on first down. Now it's now it's tough. I mean, now they're, you know, even though they're on the goal line, this is still a passing situation here. But it's tough to play action pass because the Dolphins are going to play pass here. They're not going to play or react to run. I don't know. That looked like he should have caught that, didn't it? Third down and goal from the one. And they finally get in. Tomlinson. He says enough already. So handed the ball at the one. It takes them three plays, but in they go to make it a two touchdown game. What they did is they got in a passing a passing formation, made the Dolphins think pass, react to pass, and then they just ran the ball to Ladanian Tomlinson. That's a move that he makes here. I and mean, he starts and he holds him to the outside, makes him react to the outside, then cuts it back to the inside. 24-10 as they mount what they hope is a comeback. Hey, John, maybe we've been through the dishwater. Maybe we're coming out of the dishwater here. Sometimes at the <laughs> bottom, bottom of dirty dishwater is some pretty good stuff. Eastern and Pacific and 9 Central and Mountain, Wednesday night on ABC. 24-10 Miami. The Ricky Williams fumble gives San Diego an opportunity to get back in the game. And the kickoff is fielded by Travis Minor. As the Mike Cyphers kick is brought back to the 25-yard line. 12-21 left in the fourth. Greasing the Dolphins with the ball and a 14-point advantage. Miami Dolphins have the ball at their own 25. Miami trying to go to five and two, and they would trail New England by a half game. San Diego trying to avoid dropping to one and six as Greasy throws caught near side. James McKnight tackled by Quentin Jammer. You know, Marcellus Wiley very proudly announced that Marcellus Wiley, Columbia before, so one of the Ivy Leaguers and through extensive research we have come up with the following fact this is the first year since 1927 a player from each Ivy League school has played in the NFL and there they are right there you've got Wiley out of Columbia and Dartmouth with Jay Fiedler all eight represented and that pass is incomplete intended for Darius Thompson and Drew Brees didn't want to go to Brown why not I don't know. He said he wanted to go to a, a big time school, but uh, I had a son who went to Brown and and he thought that was a big time school and I kind of thought it was a big time school. Dave Fiedler, of course, went to Dartmouth. You know, I think it, it, it proves something. If you're a football player and you want to play in the NFL, you can go anywhere and they're going to find you. Mm -hmm. It also proves that you play in the Ivy League. That doesn't mean you're not an NFL player. They'll find you. Third down and five, and that catch was made up at the 37-yard line by Chris Chambers, who matriculated at Wisconsin. A little look at that list. With Harvard having two guys in the league. Princeton having two guys Princeton in the is, league. Right. Who was the best Ivy League player that played in the NFL? The best Ivy League player who's played in the NFL. Uh, I'll tell you who it is. I, I know exactly who it is in my mind. I just, I just thought about it. First down and ten, and that is caught 
by Darius Thompson. They were probably both thinking about the same well, guy, aren't we? Wow, look at this. <laughs> you know, someone, we, else, someone else is thinking. Yes, I mean, we, we may move trucks and all these yeah. other things into Tempe, and, and, and there it is. All of a sudden, we're thinking about Sid Luckman, and he pops up. Uh, who would carry a picture of Sid Luckman? But, that, I mean, <laughs> if you think of, of Ivy League and all-time Ivy League, hey. probably if you think of all-time anything, yeah. you have to think of Sid Luckman as one of the greats in the NFL. That was before they had face masks and everything. That was when you could fold up your helmet and put it in your back pocket. So he went to Columbia, lived in Brooklyn. But believe it or not, when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, Sid Luckman lived down the block. And one day he came out and played punch ball with us. And it was, it was you know, you couldn't believe it. It was like being in fantasy camp. You can't beat that. No, that I mean, was... Yeah, I, mean, I mean, playing punch ball with, with Sid Luckman, now you're talking. That's right. You know, and he was a heck of a guy. I mean, oh, I, you know, you know, I used to go to Chicago a lot, and uh, I'd always, you know, I'd see Sid Luckman there a lot. And, and you know, I mean, he still loved the game, had a passion for the game, wasn't jealous of the players. Passed on just a couple of years ago, and that pass intended for McMichael is incomplete, covered there by Terrence Keel. And you kind of like that you know those those guys who played a long time ago didn't make any money but were kind of the backbone of the National Football League and enjoy the league the way it is now and don't have any jealousy about it that's kind of refreshing yes and really made the league they were there they were there in the formative stages or a little beyond that and then brought the league to the point where you know it was taken a little bit by the time he got to that the ball and war giant overtime game in 58 and that that took the lead to the, the very next level and that pass is incomplete so San Diego is going to get the ball back here yeah, one thing I think that's interesting here with the Dolphins and Brian Greasy is he, he, he doesn't look like he has any ill effects of that toe you know he injured the toe in preseason and really had to do nothing for two months and this is the first game that he's played since and you know, he doesn't look like he's limping around or, or doing any of those kinds of things. No, but he's angry with himself because he couldn't take any more time off the clock. And Shane Lieber's going to get it back as Matt Turk sends it into the Arizona sky. And it's out of bounds at uh, about the 20-yard line. And San Diego will take over at that spot. 9.33 remaining in the fourth. Back to Denver we go. The Patriots come to town. Their only Monday night appearance of the season. Tom Brady and company against the Denver Broncos in what now becomes a vital game for Denver because Kansas City is 8-0. And looks like they're on their way to the AFC West title. And Denver has to hang in there. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. As the Chargers begin this drive down by 14 and Breeze gets sacked by Jeff Scanina who's been around a long time always gets overlooked 11th year guy and wants that said you know this guy gets no attention but he's been great this season. Yeah and, and we we know him as kind of a run stopper you know a big thick guy there in the middle and and, and he, he plays with Chester and Bowens and and, and when you talk about defense and, as you say, who's playing well, Dave Wanstead will always say, hey, Jeff Scanina, we picked him up, and that was one of our biggest pickups because you talk about those other guys in the middle, but he is rotating in there with them and playing quite a bit. Second and 19 is Breeze under duress throws. And it's a loss on a pass to Tomlinson, and let's check in with Lisa. Thanks very much, Al. I've got an injury update for you. Dolphins defensive tackle Larry Chester has a right hamstring injury and a left quad injury. In fact, they've just carted him off the field moments ago. He's up in the locker room right now, and his return is doubtful. Bad combination, right, left, and that's why Scanine is in there with Bowens. Yeah, and remember the, the play that he did it on was the Drew Brees scramble, and Chester was chasing him over on that side, and that's when he did it. And then, Again, that's one of the reasons that Jeff Scanina is playing the whole rest of the way. Third and 20 now. Breeze under pressure in the end zone, loses the ball. It's a fumble. And if San Diego recovers, it's a safety, and that's what it is. It was either going to be a safety or a touchdown or out of the end zone, and it's Rob Burnett who creates the fumble and winds up with the sack as Damian McIntosh recovers 
but it's still two points. Yeah, you just look like this Dolphin defense said, enough of that stuff. We gave them a touchdown down there. We're not going to let them get any momentum off of this drive, and they just went after Drew Brees on three straight plays. 26 to 10. You can get John Madden's analysis and more at allmadden.com and over on NFL.com. You can relive that classic 81 AFC Divisional playoff game, Chargers Dolphins, the, the Kellen Winslow, Dan Fouch scheme back in 81. That was a classic. San Diego winning in overtime, and then the following week they go up and play in, in about the coldest game ever played in Cincinnati. And lose to the Bengals, who go on to the Super Bowl, where they lose to Bill Walsh's 49ers. Darren Bennett with a free kick now. 23 yard line, Sam Simmons. And he takes the ball into San Diego territory. Speaking of Sid Luckman, I mean, the trucks may have pulled in. At Three o'clock in the morning, but we have a Sid package for you. And those were bare records, still are, from 39 to 50. And Sid in those days wore number 42. Look at that jump pass. The old jump pass. <laughs> throwing a strike on the run. The old fake and then come back and throw in another strike. I can see why he was a heck of a punch ball player. Boy, you, I'm telling you, what an athlete. I mean, he had, a, I mean, he had to be a real good punch ball player when he played with you guys. Two sewers. <laughs> you were big time. 44 yard line. <laughs> and the handoff is to Ricky Williams, where he's tackled by Marcellus Wiley. You know what someone's yeah, gonna I was just gonna say what someone's gonna ask when they when they see that. I may ask it myself, whatever happened to the jump pass? And why don't guys jump pass? You know, I think Brett Favre will still throw a jump pass every once in a while. Jim McMahon in his day would have thrown a jump pass. Mm -hmm. Then you go all the way back to Sid. If Brett's uh, listening, I bet you he's thinking about that right now. Well, he'll he'll throw it sometimes, and then if he doesn't throw it, he'll hand off and he'll fake it. Second and 11. The roll by Greasy. Speaking of the jump, it reminds me a, a flag comes in a few years ago. Frank Gifford and Lee Grosscup. We were having dinner. I put the two of them together, and, and and Lee reminded Frank that Jim Lee Howell, the old Giants coach, would tell Frank, Frank, you can't jump up for the ball. As Backwards out makes of the, the ball. pocket. No foul. No foul. And then and, and and lead to the invitation of Howell, Howell saying to Frank, Frank, you don't have to jump up to catch the football. Every football ever thrown up in the air has come down. Eventually, it will come down. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, Jim Lee Howell, he had a, a couple pretty good assistants, didn't he? Wasn't Vince Lombardi, his mm -hmm. offensive coordinator, and yep. Tom Landry, his defense? You bet. Right? Those two probably did a lot of that coaching. Yeah. Did Lord. Vince Lombardi coach Lee Grosscott? He did not. He did. Couple was a number one draft choice. He'll be here announcing the Cal Arizona State game in the stadium as Ricky Williams. Takes it to the 26-yard line. I mean, this stadium saw a, an NFL game yesterday. Monday night football tonight. Next week, Cal comes in to play Arizona State on Saturday. And then the Bengals come here on Sunday. And this stadium now becomes the sixth stadium to host two games in two days. You go back to Frankfurt, Pennsylvania in 25. The Cotton Bowl and the Coliseum. Shea Stadium when... The Giants had to play there one year. Giants Stadium does it numerous times, of course, as the home of the Giants and the Jets. And now Sun Devil Stadium is in that pantheon. Who do you think was one of the teams that played in that Frankfurt one? You know what? The here we go one. again. <laughs> I know. I know here we go again. It couldn't have been Pottsville, was it? It had to be Pottsville. It was Pottsville. In fact, in 1925, Frankfurt beat the Green Bay Packers 13-7, but the next day they had to play the Pottsville Maroons, and our Pottsville team won that game 49 to nothing. And I'm proudly wearing a Pottsville Maroon T-shirt. We, we got those. Yeah. Pottsville 49 nothing. They covered. Just like the people that got in here tonight. Second and nine. Williams again. 
taken down by Donnie Edwards. Let's check in with Lisa. Now I have an interesting story here for you. Chargers rookie Terrence Keel overcame near tragedy this summer to get back to the football field. On July 4th, he was the victim of an attempted carjacking in Houston. He was shot four times, twice in the knee, once in the hip, once in the abdomen. He fought his way back to health, but he tells me he still feels pain from those bullet wounds on every tackle. Tomorrow, he heads to Houston to testify against the man who shot him, but with a whole new appreciation for life. Mm -hmm. I remember that story. The summer keel another one of the young guys in that secondary we talked about it before four new starters this year keel one of the extra dbs is greasy throws hits williams and he's a little short of the first down he's tackled there by jerry wilson you know in this san diego charger defense really has a a bad combination here is you say a young secondary and the, you know the best friend of a young secondary is a good pass rush and the Chargers don't have a good pass rush so that's going to put more pressure on that young secondary in fact Marty Schottenheimer a couple weeks ago was playing a lot of man to man he went to zone and mix in man and then where he used to use a lot of man and mix in zone just because of that because if you're going to play man you better have a good pass rush. Mate for a 36-yard field goal. Ooh, a little off to the left. And I went, ooh, because there's a certain number in play tonight, and it's 38, and our point total at the moment is still 36. 26 to 10, Miami. And 420 remaining in the fourth quarter. Sun Devil Stadium, which of course, is on the campus of Arizona State, and remain the home of the Sun Devils for a while but the the Cardinals are in the process of watching over construction of their new facility which is out in the northwestern part of the Valley of the Sun out in Glendale and they're going to be in there in the 2006 season in fact the the NFL is going to vote in the next couple of days for the January 2008 Super Bowl following the 2007 season and it comes down to the Phoenix area Washington D.C and Tampa and that's going to be determined in the next few days. Well there's never been one in the Phoenix here. Oh uh, yep one yeah, time. There has been one you're right. There's never been one in Washington D.C. Barry Switzer's Super Bowl yeah. as the coach of the Cowboys right here against Pittsburgh. Yep. Well, maybe Washington has a pretty good shot at that. I mean some sometime they're going to play a Super Bowl in, in the East. I mean you know they can't say well it's too cold because they play championship games there. They mm -hmm. play playoff games there and that someday one of these Eastern teams are going to get a Super Bowl. Well the Giants or the Giants Stadium was going to be a bidder until recently and they decided to delay it for a year. As Tomlinson makes the catch. Of course they played Super Bowls in cold weather sites but with roofs. Minneapolis and Detroit and Detroit gets another one uh, after the 2005 season. Yeah but I think like I said they can play championship games uh, out of doors in the East and then you know a week or two later what the heck play a Super Bowl. I I say give it to them go for it. I do too. Yeah, we got to spread it around. I mean that's part of football I and mean, that's what you know you look at Sid Luckman and those guys I mean they played in that weather what mm -hmm. the heck. What's the deal. We're, we're playing night games now in January. We're in Green Bay. The snowball in in New England a couple of years ago. Anything goes these days. First and ten. Tomlinson swing pass. And hurdles out of bounds near midfield. There was, as we say, one Super Bowl played here at Sun Devil Stadium. The Cardinals came here from St. Louis in '88. And through the years, the Cardinals have been on Monday Night Football only three times. This is Tomlinson's first time on Monday Night Football and I was asking him about that tinted shield and he said that you know he didn't wear it his first two years in the NFL with the Chargers and he got a prescription this year to wear it and you have to have a prescription to wear a tinted shield and he said it really doesn't bother him at night and he's used to it because he wore it all the time in college and it, you know it's kind of like you always worry about someone wearing sunglasses at night or sunglasses indoors tinted shields at night in that same family. Breeze rolling. And that pass is caught by Boston who gets rolled down inside the 40 of Miami. <laughs> still here. 
here's Boo and David Boston. A look at Boston, who came out of Ohio State and made the big play in the Rose Bowl to cost Arizona State. Oh, that's, you know what? Now that I think about it, that's another reason they're booing him. I mean, this, this just dawned on me, John. When Jake Plummer scored on what would have been one of the more fantastic plays in the history of college football, and ASU was trying to win the Rose Bowl against Ohio State, and then the Buckeyes get the ball back, and it's Boston who scores coming back the other way. Now, now it all comes together. Yeah, now you sound like a Red Sox fan. <laughs> you guys could bring out all the things. You bring out the Rose Bowl, you bring out the, the Ohio State, you bring out everything they did to you. And it never goes away, does it? Speaking of great plays in college football, I mean, you think of Doug Flutie and they play in the Orange Bowl against Miami in, I guess, what was that, 84? That's where, Phelan. that's where he rolled right, right? He, he, he went back and then he went out to his right and launched one. Launched one to Phelan. They have a name for that? I think they do. Hmm. I'm out of marbles. I can't think of it. <laughs> I saw a thing on Doug Flutie, though, where he was saying that that wasn't the biggest play of his life. You know, the, the biggest was when he was in Canada and won a championship in Canada. I mean, Doug has had about 14 different lives in football. He was out for a while. Then Mike Ditka brought him back. Canada. Buffalo, three or four years ago, led the Bills into the playoffs. Won the Heisman in 84. Bears, Pats, CFL. Look at that CFL, six-time MVP. Second and 15. From the 42-yard line, and Breeze gets sacked. Back at the 49 yard line of Gunlayer. So the Charger woes continue. You, by the way, I should mention the JB, the patch on the Charger uniforms. And in the memory of John Butler, their much respected and very well liked general manager who succumbed to cancer during the offseason. So it's been a um, an emotionally racking year for the San Diego Chargers. And when you look at the standings, it's reflected there. Yeah, and you you know you look at the game that Drew Brees has has had tonight. I mean, he's been completely frustrated by this defense, and you say, well, why don't you put Doug Flutie in? That's not Doug Flutie's job anymore. I mean, Doug Flutie's job isn't to come in and mop up a 26 to 10 mess. I mean, his job is something happened to Drew Brees, and the Chargers only carry you know two quarterbacks. His job would be to be the quarterback until Drew Brees got back, but. Drew Brees got him in this position, and Drew Brees has to finish this one out. Well, Miami will go home. They'll fly into the night and get ready to take on Indianapolis. Big game next Sunday. And then they go to Tennessee. So two very big games coming up for the Dolphins as they try to keep pace with the New England Patriots. Third and 23, and Breeze gets it just about back to the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, it would have been another sack, and that's Scanina making the tackle. Yeah, I think the Dolphins are going to feel pretty good about themselves coming off of this game in Brian Greasy. And Miami will go to five and two. And again, uh, they have played one less game. Miami has already had its by. New England has not. New England is on Monday Night Football next week as we get them at Denver. And that, that does count as a sack, even though it's at the line of scrimmage, John. It's a sack, and it's six sacks tonight. Been that kind of night for Drew Brees. But you, know, you talk about coaches and coaching jobs and coach of the year and best coach and all those things. Bill Belichick has to be up in that group on things that he does. Unbelievable. Because everybody was talking about the fact he's lost the team after that the lawyer Malloy deal. Oh, yeah, he's lost the team. They don't respect him. Huh? What? 153, the two minute warning. 26 10 Miami. Football being brought to you by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Wendy's new home style chicken strips. Another reason it's better here. And State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Aerial coverage by Bud Light. 
And a lot of the crowd is headed out for a Bud Light and a burrito in downtown Tempe. Over under on the time and student will go to sleep here tonight, John. 2.25 a.m. That long? Yeah. And between now and then, what do they do between now and 2.25? Bud Light and a burrito. Coming up next, the Auto Trader Field. That's more than one burrito and one Bud Light. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, Multiples. It is. No driving, kids. Good thing is you can walk back to the dorm. First and ten at the eight-yard line for the Miami Dolphins as they will run it out. And the workhorse, Ricky Williams. Williams tonight has had a very mundane evening. 21 carries for 61 yards, but Greasy's done enough, and, and the defense, of course, the and, defense. And I think that that's, that's all part of it. You know, if you want to gang up, like I said before, and, and stop the run, and that's what the Chargers were going to do. I mean, their number one thing, their number two thing was Ricky Williams, and if you're going to do that, you can do it. You can take away the run, but if you do that, then the quarterback has to make a play. And tonight, you know, we had that. Brian Greasy did make the plays, and, and Drew Brees was the same thing on their side. Drew Brees didn't make the play. Under 21 rating for Greasy, and for Brees, whose number was in the 30s last uh, week in Cleveland, but that was uh, good enough to get them a victory. They're only one of the season. But the key thing, TD slash in. Three touchdowns, no picks for that man. No touchdowns, three picks for Brees. Williams and San Diego takes its final timeout. Have to take a timeout and then come up with some plays that can score 16 points. That's two touchdowns and two two-point plays. Well, the horse trailer worked its way from San Diego into Arizona. The horse trailer has to feel at home. I mean, the next couple in Arizona, going to Denver next week. You know, I had a trail coming in here tonight. I followed the horse trailer, and the horse trailer is spewing oil or something because it made a mess. <laughs> it, really, it made a mess coming up the road. No. I mean, there's a big old, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was spewing something. Drew Brace frustrated. Maybe horse trailer right there, maybe. You know, I think so. I mean, not only does Sertan have two picks tonight, but, I mean, he... he Change the complexion of the game very early on. And that's the thing that I think got Brian Greasy started feeling comfortable with that field position that Sertan got him over. Sertan's first pick came very early in the game, and Ricky Williams is going to pick up the first down, and now they can run the clock out the rest of the way. And, and Greasy was able to capitalize, and there he is, the cornerback, Patrick Sertan. The other pick came after San Diego had a golden chance to get right back in it. They'd forced Miami to be offside on the field goal, what looked like a field goal attempt, and then Sertan ended that drive with a pick. And uh, it was lights out pretty early for San Diego, thanks to that man. And it was on that slant pattern, and instead of you know following the receiver in or playing over the top of him, on both of them, he went underneath and undercut it and went for the interception. And as I said, he got between the receiver and the quarterback. Time for the league lead in interceptions and one more kneel down by Brian Greasy and that'll do it. Now why would an official from way deep here call a penalty no. here? When everyone knows There's what no everyone's doing. The ball went with the snap. There is no foul. We're going to wind the clock. I would think that's a good idea. Yes. What did he say? The ball went with the snap? The ball, I think. The ball went with the snap. Huh. That's why. <laughs> That's one to contemplate on your way home yes. to the burrito. That's right. With the burrito, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're talking about all over the Valley of the Sun tonight. <laughs> well, anyway, our, our congratulations to the, the, the Arizona Cardinal organization and the people who work the games here for being able to pull this off under these extraordinary circumstances. And now for the the Chargers it's back to San Diego and for the people of San Diego it's it's real life as that continues the Miami Dolphins head back to 
Florida with a victory here five and two is their record and they get ready to take on the Indianapolis Colts next Sunday. 2610 the Dolphins win it and the auto trader dot com post game show is coming up next. On Miami wins at 26 to 10 Patrick Sertan is on the horse trailer and on the other side of the ball it was Brian Greasy in his Dolphins debut and he's down on the field with Lisa Guerrero Lisa. Thanks Al. Well Brian Greasy certainly didn't look like a quarterback who hasn't started since December 22nd 2002. Just how comfortable were you tonight Brian. Well I, I felt pretty comfortable in the first half you know we, we made some plays uh, down the field and you know our defense played great all night and uh, for us offensively we capitalized on some of the turnovers they had uh, early in the game and uh, and unfortunately we didn't play very well in the second half but uh, we came out with a W. Now I understand that your toe injury isn't really going to be 100 percent until well after the season. How do you feel physically right now. I feel pretty good you know I I don't think I'm going to be running any four sevens anytime soon but uh, then again I don't think I could ever run a four seven so I'm just going to make do. The Dolphins certainly didn't seem distracted at all by the circumstances surrounding the change of venue tonight. How did y'all keep your focus. Well you know our thoughts were with the, the families uh, in San Diego the people that have lost houses and lost loved ones. Uh, they should know that they were in our thoughts and prayers and, and uh, we wanted to do anything we could to help them out uh, and hopefully we will in the future. But uh, we just we just wherever we played this game we were going to come out and play hard and that's what we did. Brian do you expect to start next week against the Colts. I really don't have any idea you know I, I'm going to try to get uh, as healthy as I can with my toe and continue to work with the guys and, and let what happens happen. I'm going to let you go because I'm sure you have a proud papa that you want to get to with a phone call correct. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Back up to you Al. All right. Thank you Lisa. Daddy Bob has to be beaming. 26 to 10. Sertan does the job defensively. Greasy and the rest offensively and that wraps it up for the autotrader.com post game show. Final score again was Miami 26 San Diego 10 next Monday to Denver the New England Patriots against the Denver Broncos on Monday night football. Until then Al Michaels John Madden Lisa Guerrero saying good night from Tempe Arizona.